Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about menopause and breast cancer, what causes it, what you should do about it, and what to expect if you expect that you'll be going through menopause. So for people who have ovaries, menopause, the definition of is, and I don't like this term, ovarian failure. So basically the ovaries stop functioning. As when we're born, our ovaries are already containing all the eggs that we're going to have. And again, this is for people with ovaries. And when we uh, go through our normal menopausal changes that starts as early as in the 40s, we start to have some symptoms that our cycles are changing. They might become irregular and we might have side effects like vaginal dryness or uh, hot flushes or some difficulty sleeping. The average age of menopause for people with ovaries in this country, in the United States and in most of the Western world is in around the age of 50. So what's the relationship between breast cancer and menopause? Well, a couple things. First of all, many of the treatments we use can be associated with early menopause. So in particular, chemotherapy, which affects rapidly dividing cells, which would include the tissues of the ovary, can stop the ovaries from functioning. Now this can happen in two different ways. One is it can be permanent. So one can go through chemotherapy-induced menopause, or another type is temporary, where the ovaries are temporarily shut down, and then after chemotherapy is over, they resume functioning. And we call this affectionately chemopause. If you're going through chemotherapy and your periods stop, or shortly they, thereafter they stop, we don't know right away if this is chemopause or menopause. We do know that the older you are when you start chemotherapy, the more likely this is to be permanent. The reason this matters is because the medications that we use to treat breast cancer depend on, this is the endocrine therapy, depends on whether or not the ovaries are functioning. So for example, in people who still have ovarian function, we do not use the aromatase inhibitors. That's super important to know. In fact, the aromatase inhibitors will cause the ovaries to wake up and to produce more estrogen. So it's like being on a very expensive placebo, which we don't want to be on. We would use in that case, in somebody whose ovaries are still functioning, we use tamoxifen. So it's really important to know, are the ovaries done producing estrogen or are they just resting? It doesn't mean that if you have temporary and you don't yet know if it's permanent cessation of ovarian function that you can't be on an aromatase inhibitor, but we do like to follow your estrogen levels. The other thing, and check out our other video about this, is that we will often put people who are at high enough risk that chemotherapy was recommended will suppress the ovaries. So if it looks like your ovaries are starting to wake up, or if we're pretty sure they're still awake, we can put you on a medication called an LHRH analog, which induces a medical menopause that's reversible. And you'll be on this for two to three years. There's studies using both two and three years of LHRH analogs. Again, that's a separate video. And if you wanna learn more about whether or not this is part of your treatment plan, or you might be hearing about this, go to yerba.com to learn more about your personalized treatment options. Now, if you have gone through menopause before chemotherapy, it's not likely that chemotherapy will have any effect. In other words, menopause happened naturally and chemotherapy will not change your ovarian function at all. So really most of what I'm talking about is for people who have functioning ovaries, whether or not you're having regular periods before chemotherapy. So lots of people can have functioning ovaries, but they don't menstruate monthly because they have polycystic ovary disease or they have an IUD or uh, it's just not what their body does. So everybody's different. So I'm hoping this is helpful for all sorts of people. 
Now we can also remove the ovaries through surgical procedure. This is a pretty low risk procedure. It's done laparoscopically with a little incision below your belly button and one above the pubic bone. And we use a laparoscope to remove the ovaries and usually fallopian tubes as well. We don't recommend a hysterectomy for most people with breast cancer. It's another uh, major surgery. But if you cannot tolerate um, being on tamoxifen and an aromatase inhibitor as part of your treatment and getting a monthly injection of an LHRH analog is not something that either you can afford financially or you just don't want to be going every month to get an injection, you can have the ovaries removed and we recommend doing that if you're already close to your natural menopause age. So let me give a couple examples. If you're in your 30s and you have some irregular periods, it's very likely your ovaries will wake up again. If an LHRH analog is recommended for you for a couple years, we would do that to suppress your ovaries and to suppress your periods. We will sometimes do blood tests to make sure we're being effective. After the LHRH analog stops, your period will come back and you will get the benefits of your own estrogen while you stay on anti-estrogen therapy, specifically tamoxifen. If you're older and you're closer to natural menopause age, we can feel more comfortable removing the ovaries if you're comfortable doing so. One of the strategies I take is to put somebody where removal of the ovaries is part of what they want to do. And what we'll do is start you on an LHRH analog, put you into menopause a little more slowly. If you're doing okay, then you can proceed to a surgical oophorectomy. Now this is not, the LHRH analogs are not available in every country. They are expensive. They will be covered by insurance, but of course there are co-pays and co-insurance and high deductible healthcare plans. So these are all things that you'll want to take into account when you think about whether or not menopause being induced either medically or surgically is something that makes sense for you. And again, visit yerba.com to learn more. Now, what if you go through menopause? What do you expect? Everybody's different. Your own family members may have gone through menopause without any evidence, no hot flashes, no symptoms at all. And that's the case for many, many people with ovaries. You may also have heard about people having a lot of symptoms related to menopause. We talk about hot flushes, hot flashes, night sweats, chills, it sounds pretty uncomfortable and it can be for many people. We also see vaginal dryness and that can lead to problems with intimacy, of course. And even if you don't have an intimate partner, it can lead to problems with sexual function. So decrease in libido, check out our other YouTube video about libido and vaginal dryness that can be uncomfortable. There are a lot of other things that can happen long-term, like loss of bone mineral density, where your bones become lighter. And that's something that happens with natural menopause. If you go through menopause earlier, you'll wanna talk with your medical team about how to protect your bones. And then of course, after we go through menopause, regardless of whether it's natural or induced or premature, we wanna also think about your heart. So we see after menopause that people with functioning ovaries have an increase in the risk of cardiac events, specifically um, heart attacks. So this is where you'll wanna to talk to your primary care doctor, to your other medical team about what can you do to protect your heart. I've covered a lot in this video. We have medications to manage most of these side effects. We do try to stay away from exogenous estrogen, where we give you estrogen by mouth or vaginal estrogen, but every single person's case is different. Talking with your primary care doctor, your oncology team, your gynecologist, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation doctors, all of these people can help you get the best care because you won't, don't just want to survive breast cancer, you want to have a good quality of life. 
Thanks for watching. If it's been helpful to you, click like and subscribe. What that does is it helps other people looking for this kind of information to find it on this channel. And again, visit yerba.com if you wanna learn more about what to expect with your treatment and your treatment options.